50. 50 years old. As my 50th birthday approached, I felt really anxious about it. For some reason, this one hit me harder than any other. So I decided to seek support. But from who? Who could honestly relate to how I was feeling about being alive for half a century? It was then I realized I needed to connect with other people going through the same experience, the same moment in their lives, turning 50 years old. I've been a professional photographer for over 25 years, so my plan was a photo project where I would photograph and interview 50 people turning 50 years old. I was to do one a week, maybe take two weeks off for holidays, and complete the project within my 50th year. No problem, right? <laughs> in my line of work, I hear I'm not very photogenic all the time, and I never believe it. Now I was hearing, I'm not so sure my story's worth a profile, but I believe everyone has a great story inside them. As I started the profiles, the focus immediately shifted. Originally, I thought we'd have a nice chat, get to know my subjects, you know, the kind of thing I do in my work, and then concentrate on what I was good at, making the images. But it was then I realized I wasn't doing a photography project with a few words. I was doing a story project with a few photos. By the fourth profile, I realized that these stories could help not only me, but others as well. Sherry was so open with her mental health struggles, she shared her story with me in hopes of helping others facing the same challenges. I also realized that my goal of one story a week for 50 weeks was a tad ambitious. <laughs> so what did I learn? The first thing I realized is that 50-year-olds are really busy. <laughs> Generally speaking, we're at the peak of our career. Some of us are raising children, a few of us are even grandparents, and many of us have aging family members to care for. With the time we have left, we like to do the things we love. So even scheduling these interviews was a challenge. After Dwayne tucks his son into bed, he takes to running hundreds of kilometers between 8 p.m. and 2 a.m., training for ultramarathons. He finds it keeps everything in perspective and makes his life less stressful. The other thing everyone talked about was the idea that they wanted to travel more. And I was trying to figure out why, and then I was reminded why these events in our lives are called milestones. A milestone was literally a rock on the side of the road that told you how far you've come and how far you've yet to go. When you came across a milestone in your journey, you would use the opportunity to stop, refresh, and reflect. But I learned that as much as we make plans and strive towards a goal, life has a way of shaping your journey in unexpected ways. A car crash. A giving mentor, an economic downturn. There are so many ways to send you on a path that you can never see. Raising two boys with hemophilia, Christine got involved in the organization that supported her, volunteering and eventually becoming the executive director. She's traveling the world to connect with others in the hemophilia community. After going through school studying theater, Janet ended up a theater technician. Unsatisfied, she took a one-year course in journalism. Now she's the local news anchor here in Winnipeg. Sanjay traveled from his small town in India to Kolkata to take his accountancy exam. Since he was already there, he decided to do another exam, this time for the Fashion Institute. He got in and has spent a life in the fashion industry, ultimately moving to Canada. Over the 50 years, many of us have faced some big challenges. Those challenges haven't defeated us. In fact, they've made us stronger. 
At 50 and eight years sober, Patty is living what she feels is her best life. She's working wardrobe on movie sets, selling vintage clothing, and she doesn't let regret eat her up. The bullying that Catherine endured through school fueled her drive to show everyone that she could become a doctor. She finally got to med school only to lose both of her parents within months. Suddenly alone and facing her biggest challenge, she went on to become a doctor of hematology. Rhonda was telling me about her journey from the reservation in northern Manitoba to singing and recording her music in her native Cree, performing it in concert halls all over the world when she revealed to me that she had battled a brain tumor along the way, twice. Many of us think back to when our own parents turned 50. Mom is so old. <laughs> but suddenly, here we are. When I asked my subjects how old they feel, the answer was between 28 and 32. Eileen is that 50-year-old who cleans her house, pays her bills, and more and more reminds herself of her mom. But when she's out for a long ride on her bike, free of any responsibility, she's transformed into that innocent 12-year-old who hates doing any chores. Chris has worked in the comic book industry for 30 years. When he's not working, he's filling pages of journals with his pencil sketches, drawing as furiously as he did when he was a kid. Kenton still buys Star Wars figures to create a collection that brings joy to that inner nine-year-old who saw that first movie. When you get to this age, you actually have the money to buy that thing you always wanted when you were a kid. <laughs> By the time we've reached 50, health and mortality are a real concern. Either we've lost somebody, or we've had health scares of our own. Kitty survived breast cancer to embrace her passion for writing. She's gone on to publish two books of fiction. After Sabine had a mini-stroke scare, she worked hard to find that life-work balance, spending more time on that motorcycle she's always wanted. All set to celebrate his 50th birthday with a big party, Pat lost his mom two days before the celebrations. He had a big 51st birthday party instead. I asked my subjects to look back and think back to when they were 25 and to give advice to that 25-year-old self. My hope was that maybe somebody 25 would read it, but who am I kidding? <laughs> what 25-year-old is going to take advice from a 50-year-old? I know I certainly didn't. As much as Doug loved journalism, he realized the business was changing. So we switch careers. When you see the world around you changing, you can't be angry. You've got to embrace it and change with it. He's now using his investigative skills to do background screening of professionals in Asia. At 25, Linda was living with a roommate and working part-time in a store. When she had a last-minute opportunity to live overseas, she found all sorts of reasons not to go. But in the end, she feels it was fear that held her back. Her advice to 25-year-olds is to take more chances. Daryl has no regrets. He realizes that everything good and bad in his life has led him to this point. It took him a while to find his passion, but he wasn't afraid to take a gamble. And at 35, he became a locksmith. I asked my subjects to give advice to other, 50 -year -old, other people approaching 50. Many talked about being open to learning. Even as a teacher, Dean says there's so much more to learn. He learns as much from his students as they learn from him. Heather doesn't care what other people think. <laughs> she knows how she feels about herself is way more important than how others feel about you. When asked how she was feeling about turning 50, Claire replied, what's the alternative? Many of us are not looking at retirement in the traditional sense. We're just tailoring our lives around our passions. Betty Jo sees 50 as a reset, a new baseline, an opportunity to set new goals. She's taking on new challenges in her workplace and working hard to learn how to be a better wife, mother, daughter, and friend. Evan walked away from a successful design firm he helped build to go back to the passion that fueled his journey in the first place, graphic design. 
When you get to this age, there's a certain amount of decluttering happening, and you start to focus on the things that make you truly happy. Darren's father took an early retirement, and then, within six months, died by suicide. The memory of that fuels Darren to ensure that he remains actively engaged in contributing in the world. Looking back, I, I now realize I couldn't have done this project until I was 50 years old. I needed to be at this point in my life, taking all the skills I've learned over the years to make it a success. I finally finished the project two weeks ago. Thank you. Two and a half years after I started. <laughs> I started the project in hopes of learning how to be 50 years old. But I realize now that being 50 means there is no big epiphany, no big secret to learn. We spend the first half of our life simply learning how to live it. And then we take all that, embrace the second half of our life, and enjoy it to its fullest potential. Thank you.